Hi, welcome to Building Bridges Ministry, <clears throat> where bridges are being built between the lost and the path to Jesus. <clears throat> so, I wanted to share a story that came to me. Um, I work for a fire safety company that's local here, and <clears throat> we work on, on gas station canopies and check fire suppression systems. So, one day we're doing some repair work and I'm up on the canopy and I start thinking about stuff that, uh, if you look at like a, a microorganism for like a cold and you look underneath the microscope, how pretty it looks or, you know, and you don't know what it, if you just see a picture of it, how, how pretty it is, but how dangerous it is. Um, or like a piece of wood, if you take like a bird's eye, maple very beautiful furniture but that wood is damaged by nature through one way or the other and uh, it could be turned into beautiful things <clears throat> so the idea is how god can turn ugly things into godly things <clears throat> um one way I can relate to this is my mother bought me a wood lathe uh, one Christmas. <clears throat> and I was doing firewood at the time. And as I'm picking through the firewood, you know, getting it cut and put in the, in the truck, I come across this burl. Now, if you don't know what a, a, a burl is, is, it's basically a knot on a tree that is formed from some form of damage to the tree either got nicked or, or whatever but it, it, you, you'll see like a, a growth on the side of this tree yeah i'm crazy me i'm all excited about this crazy burl right um because i've heard when you turn them on the lathe they get all these great greens and very beautiful beautiful wood so i i pick up this piece and get my firewood and I hurry, hurry home and I throw it onto the, <clears throat> onto the lathe and I start getting a chisel out and of course it's, it's too wet. So I got all the, the water splashing all over the place. So I, uh, <clears throat> I take it out of the lathe and I put it in sawdust, let it dry out until it's, it's more workable. <clears throat> so I go back at it after it's dried out for a while and, and I start turning it and you can start seeing the grain starting to pop out and, and all the, the, the beauty starting to pull out as you pull off the layers. And the more layers you pull off, the, the more detail you're getting into it. <clears throat> now this particular piece of wood that I used, it had some items that you just couldn't carve out. You couldn't get rid of them. They're, they're permanently there. And, uh, so you just leave them in. I'm going to show you what the bowl turned out like. And as you can see, you can see all the beautiful grains and stuff that are in it that you don't see until you start turning it. Okay. Another piece of wood I got is a glass that I made or a, a goblet. And see the heart you don't see that heart until you start peeling the, the layers away so God kind of does that for us he kind of pulls he kind of takes the layers off of us in ways of of life basically so he he's trying to get us to be what he wants us to be and, uh, of course, I'm trying to find a, a Bible verse to share with you with this. And uh, I was doing a Bible study with my friend. And uh, we're, we were doing Jeremiah. So, of course, the book that comes up, or the one that hits me, is Jeremiah 18, 1 to 10. <clears throat> Basically, Jeremiah, at this point of the book, he's, he's pretty uh, discouraged as you would call it, of the Jewish people, because they just aren't listening. They're, they're not paying attention to what he's saying, and God's giving him these words. So 
he basically prays for God to just do whatever you're going to do to him. Just take care of him. But God, being the loving God that he always is, <clears throat> wanted to show Jeremiah what his capabilities are. So he asked Jeremiah to go down to the potter's house <clears throat> and watch the potter potter guy work. And he sees the guy throw a piece of clay on and he starts getting his wheel spinning so he can start turning it in, into, uh, into something, whatever the guy was going to make it into. And of course, something happens and, and there's a flaw in it. So he crumples it all back up and starts all over and he starts going and he starts making a, a base or base out of it. <clears throat> God tells Jeremiah, don't you think that I can't that I can't do that with the Jews. So basically he's he's telling that telling Jeremiah is that don't give up on him and don't give up on me. Uh cuz I I know this isn't going to look it's not looking pretty because the Babylonians were going to be coming in and taking them taking over the Jews and, and taking them to slavery and and such. So it it wasn't a, a pretty picture, but God was using the Babylonians as a tool, so to say, to reshape the Jewish people to what God wanted them to be, to be a better, a better bowl, as we can say. <clears throat> um, so I mentioned scars earlier, and God uses the, the scars that we end up with are things that we can use down the road God doesn't mind us having scars that we've accumulated through our lives and he uses those scars in ways that we don't think are, are ever possible to be good um, I do a program called celebrate recovery and that program deals a lot with scars <clears throat> that deals with hurts habits and hang-ups and if if you if I didn't go through what I went through, I would never be able to relate with somebody else who's going through the same thing. So it gives me that opportunity to share with that person how how it, it wasn't it wasn't fun to be going through, but on the other side of it, I can count joy in it by being able to help him or or her whoever that i know that right now it doesn't look good but on the other side of it 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 comes out okay you just gotta work at it and and really lean on god and he is going to be there for you to help you through it <clears throat> so another story from the bible that i i found to, that related with this <clears throat> is from Genesis. Uh, the section I was looking at is like Genesis 50, 20. And it is talking about Joseph and his brothers. Joseph was a chosen child. And he knew it. He was kind of a little loud about it, kind of a little bit of bragging about it. And his brothers didn't really care for it. They, they weren't thrilled with, with how he was being a little prideful. Um, so one day they were going into town and they decided to throw him into a pit. And they were going to kill him. And then they sec second-guessed themselves and they said, well, we can't kill him. Let's sell him into slavery. <clears throat> so he gets sold into slavery into the Egyptians, with the Egyptians, and... Uh, of course, God is always with Joseph, and God has a plan for Joseph. So he works out all the details for Joseph to become a, a person of importance in Egypt. And at one point in time, he, he, the leader of Egypt that he was working with, he told them that there was going to be a famine, and so they should start preparing for it. So when the famine hit, 
Of course, the brothers had to come into town to get some supplies. And Joseph recognized them, of course. And I don't, I don't think the brothers really picked up on them, you know. <clears throat> Excuse me. So they ended up getting their supplies. And Joseph pulled over one of his, his worker guys and said, grab those three. And he kind of treated them like they were criminal type people. And kind of kind of worked him over a little bit until he finally told him that it was him and that he's been doing good. And, and he uh, asked about his father and ended up bringing his father back and, and everything. <clears throat> and the, lo the line that Joseph tells him is that you meant evil for me, but God used that for good. So... <clears throat> If we look at the so-called scars that we ha we walk around with, <clears throat> um, in that process of getting those scars, it wasn't. It's not pretty. It's not. You you're you go through quite a bit, and it's still amazing how, no matter how scarred up we get or loss that we get God is still wants us back it's not like God only accepts the the shiny things he accepts everybody so it's encouraging to me and I hope it's encouraging to you that we don't have to be perfect um we were blessed to have Jesus as uh, the the final sacrifice for everybody. And now it's just building that relationship with God and Jesus and reconnecting with him and accepting him <clears throat> and staying on the path that his son showed us to be on. Uh must have been pretty cool for the disciples to have been around and getting to see firsthand work of Jesus and, and how he interacted with people. And he didn't care. He didn't care what they looked like, what they were doing. He just was willing to talk and listen and heal people. Uh, leprosy. Leprosy was one of the ugliest things in that time. And Jesus healed them. He touched them. Didn't worry about it at all. And that is a beautiful thing in itself. Is the love that Jesus and God has for us crazy people down here on earth. <laughs> and I'm, I'm grateful for that. And a, it's a blessing every day. Um. I kind of went a little off script today, so I'm kind of a little bit off, off kilter here. Um, let's look at let's look at the words of Jeremiah.